Welcome to the future. Okay, so in this follow-up to video number 19, Trigger Barbecue Controller Teardown, we take a closer look at the snubber circuit used for suppressing inductive kick, the curious RCR circuit from the 12 amp <laughs> from the 12 amp triac to the controlling opto triac and the op amp RTD circuit. These sections were edited out of video number 19 to shorten its length because it was getting close to almost an hour long. But I thought these clips uh, would be interesting to those folks that want to kind of dig in a little deeper and check out the missing pieces. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's get started. So, uh, okay, so we've done the AC power. So after the fuse, they come off with a 120 volt line to come down here and, and feed A2 uh, of the triac right here on all, all the three different circuits for the auger, the igniter, and the fan. And they're all pretty much identical. So we'll just look at one. And this is our, our triac right here. This is the mains feed right here. This line right here comes in. Um, it also splits out through this, this little network right here, which I'll explain in a second. But yeah, this is a snubber network right here. And, and according to the art of electronics, these, uh, these snubber networks are recommended for all equipment that is uh, driving an inductive load. And a motor is definitely an inductive load. So what happens when, when this um, triac right here uh, shuts off, right? So it's going to have this motor is, is drawing current, is an inductive load, so it's, it wants to keep that current flowing, right? When this thing shuts off, you get a big spike of energy. Since we've got the snubber network right here, it just and dumps this, this excess current that got all of a sudden stopped into the snubber network uh, to be dissipated. This also protects against uh, spikes and that sort of thing, um, power, power line spikes. But uh, it, yeah, its main goal is to uh, make sure that this, this switch right here doesn't get uh, damaged when it gets turned off. Okay, so let's look at this, <laughs> this little uh, circuit right here. And, and this, this one had me scratching my head. I, I, I couldn't figure out exactly what its purpose is. Um, I, I, I mean, the triac needs a resistor to reduce the, the current going into the gate, okay? You, you can't just dump a bunch of current through the gate. You'll burn it up. Yeah, so this BTA-12 is a um, 12 amp current handling capacity with a 600 volt uh, VDRM, VR. <laughs> Basically, that's it's how much voltage it can handle when it turns off. It's kind of a blocking voltage, I guess. And um, we're going to be using the, we're not using the snubber list. We have the standard, and this is the gate current to turn it on. 50 slash 25. But one of the things I wanted to show you is the lack of recommended circuit. That's what I wanted to show you, <laughs> a recommended uh, implementation, as you can see, it's not. So I had to find another document, the sizing document I, I found. This is how you're supposed to pick your triac out. Okay, so we have the standard triac right here. So A1, gate, A2s, these are your two anodes and, and of course your gate. Okay, so we're doing the triac, it's standard. Um, I believe we're gonna be in the Quadrant one and quadrant three. After all that uh, searching around, here's the uh, the control circuit for it. And uh, this is for a DC control, but we don't want DC control. So I found this, which is just a little further down. And uh, yeah, so it says right here, we're using quadrants one, one and three. And I'm not gonna go into the explanation of how a triac works. I am not qualified for it. So we've got the load, here's our triac. And it's going through an opto triac, which is perfect because that's what we have. And here's that, right here is that, that circuit. And I dug and dug, <laughs> I could not find out. It doesn't say anywhere in this document what that's for. I mean, I, I kind of have a guess, you know, it looks, looks like a two-way RC filter if you look at it, right? You know, and since it's AC, 
Maybe that's what it is. I mean, you know, this could be like a bypass cap. I don't know. I was scratching my head. And so after digging around, I finally came up with, or finally found, this document, How to Implement an SCR or Triac in Hybrid Relay Applications. Read down through here, and you come across this guy right here, which is a Triac controlled with Opto Triac. <laughs> But here's where it says what the purpose of <laughs> these resistors in this cap is. And uh, I'll go ahead and read it real quick because I thought it was interesting. Now, the English in this is, is not too good. You'll have to bear with me. Okay, so when the line voltage is positive and the opto track is controlled, which means it's turned on, current sunk from the line uh, flows through R1, R2, and the triac part of the opto track to finally supply the track gate with a positive current G to A1. So yeah, what he's saying is when the sine, the sine wave right here is positive, then current flows through R1, R2, down through the opto triac, up into this gate right here, and then down into A1. So this would be A2, this thing's flipped upside down, right? Yeah, see, see, here's A2. So just think of it, it's flipped upside down. So uh, so that's good. Oh, by the way, and then it says, the first one is going positive is triggering in Q1, and when it's uh, negative, uh, and the current is inversed, I mean, on the negative leg, it's triggering in Q3. So it says that uh, means that an opto track with ACS device cannot be used. Yeah, we don't care about that. Uh, oh, nevertheless, it's possible with other AC switch devices. Okay, so here we go. So C1 increases and C1 increases this gate, gate circuit immunity to high uh, changes in voltage or to fast changes in voltage to high DVDT and uh, and electrical fast transients. And so that's that's the purpose of of this is to suppress the fast changes in in voltage over time. That's what this delta V delta T is. And then electrical fast transients, which are basically like spikes, you know, in the in the line. And so it kind of is a filter, right? <laughs> All right. And then it says uh, R1 reduces the change in, in current over time at triac turn on. So, so when the triac turns on, you know, this capacitor is going to discharge and dump a whole bunch of energy to your load. And R1 is there to kind of make sure you don't, you know, blow the crap out of it, right? And, uh, and then they suggest a 47 ohm resistor is recommended. Okay, that's good. So this is this all makes kind of sense, right? And then uh, R2 to allows the current through the gate to be limited before the triac turn on. And basically, this is just a, a limiter for the the gate. You can't have the the gate current too high going into the uh, into the triac. You'll blow it up. It says um, also that R2 value has to be so high to avoid maximum current allowed uh, both in the opto triac and the triac gate. At each line half cycle, the triac is off and the line voltage increases across the triac till IGT is reached. Okay, so yeah, what it's saying is, you know, voltage builds up across these, this resistor and this triac right here until enough current is going through here to turn on the triac, right? And until IGT is reached, that's the gate current. And uh, this voltage goes across the track before it is triggered, causing an EMI noise on the line, as described in another document. Having a, a low value of R2 allows the triac gate current with low line voltage to be got, and therefore EMI noise is limited. Is limited. So if you put too big of a resistor right here to protect your triac gate, you're going to cause all kinds of EMI noise. That's what they're saying. This is uh, this 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 R two value comes at a trade off among uh, opto track gate current and EMI noise. So the bigger you put, bigger R two is, the more EMI noise you get, and the lower R two is, the, the more susceptible you're going to be to having your gate blown up by a big current spike. Okay. So R3 right here, which isn't in this document here, and it also wasn't included in the uh, Traeger barbecue controller design. So R3 increase, increases circuit immunity high to uh, fast changes in voltage 
and uh, EFT, which was that uh, electrical fast transients. Okay, and it says, indeed, the immunity increases when R3 is low. Uh, R3 value also depends on the triac sensitivity across the gate. And, and it says, as R3 derives opto triac current, without this resistor, the gate current is reached later on. I, I, I don't understand this. Basically, what he or she is saying is uh, this also causes EMI noise, but it also it protects the uh the gate from from basically these power spikes and high changes and and voltage changes and so we'll take a look at this uh this optocouple here optocoupler here real quick and it is a a light on photocoupler moc 3063 oh here's the the diagram of it and the pinout it's basically this is the low voltage side where the you're just turning on the LED that turns on the opto tri triac. It's a zero crossing triac, which is good. Okay, so we'll just look at the absolute ratings real quick. Uh, input, forward current, max of uh, 50 milliamps. Reverse voltage, six volts. That's 125 degrees at the junction temperature, not outside temperature. And it'll dissipate uh, 120 uh, milliwatts. Uh, this is for the surface mount one. Okay, so the off-state output terminal voltage, this is how much it'll block, 600 volts. On-state RMS current is uh, 100 milliamps. That's what we'll need to, uh, we, we need at least half of that to, or less than half of that, between 25 and 50 milliamps to drive the uh, ST triac. Peak repetitive surge current, one amp. Uh, junction temperature, collector power dissipation. 150 milliwatts. Okay, isolation voltage, 5,000 volts. Operating temperature, between 40 and 110 C. All right, yeah, so it's, it's definitely big enough to drive our, our ST triac. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to look at was this uh, dual op amp right here, this LM358 uh, uh, op amp, and how it was, it, it had a couple um, trimmer pots. I pulled up some pictures. Here's the two trimmer pots. This is the bottom of the um, of the terminal, the two post terminal block. Let's see, I've got oh, here we go. Here's a picture of it. Yeah, so this right here is the bottom of this. You can see the two trimmer pots right here. And if you look right here, this is one trimmer pot, and the other trimmer pot is you can't really see it, but it's mounted right there. And if you look at this opto coupler, uh, let's let me find the schematic for it real quick. We've got uh, uh, pins uh, five and six, and seven are for the uh, B op amp, and then uh, one, two, and three are for the A op amp. So here's pin one, and uh, so it goes uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My original guess is that they were only using uh, one of the one of the op amps in that um, in that package, and I I think I'm I'm correct in that. And so if you look at my schematic, um, that's how you kind of do this. You have a five volt rail, uh, you run it through a voltage divider to bring it into 2.5 volts, and you send that to the RTD, and then you read the RTD through this uh, op amp buffer, right? And uh, by the way, this is this is the piece I missed when I designed my original my original barbecue controller. Anyway, so so this is how I guessed it was, and they're just they just threw some pots in here to to calibrate, I guess, the temperatures on the RTD. Well, after taking a closer look at this thing, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what they're doing here. Uh, yeah, I I double checked. They actually have uh, pins five and six right here tied together that's a trace and i actually put it on the microscope and and verified that and maybe they are using this the second op amp and i just can't see the uh the traces like i was saying but <laughs> i just dawned on me i know what they're doing i i bet you a dollar to a donut hole uh these two this this trace right here is going to ground and so what they're doing is they're just grounding the the unused inputs of the op amp right okay so i <laughs> i went ahead and lifted the chip off the board and uh yeah i 
That was right. It's so okay. If you remember on the schematic right here, yeah. So pin four is ground, and if you look at four right here, it's which is ground. It's going over to uh, input five and our pin five, pin six, which are both tied together, as you can easily see right now. And that's probably just buggering off to a ground over there somewhere. And here's the uh, here's the two inputs. Now you can see the traces a lot better. And then uh, pin one right here is the output, which is probably going off to the uh, microcontroller, I'm guessing. Yeah, so if you look at my drawing, so it's just going off to the microcontroller. And, uh, you know, I don't remember seeing a feedback line. Let's see. Um, oh, you know what? <laughs> Maybe it's not, maybe they're not being used, maybe it's not being used as a buffer. So, okay, let's look at this. So uh, for a buffer, you just tie, you know, pin one back to pin two, which, which gives you uh, a unity gain, which is basically no gain at all. It's just a buffer. But as you can see right here that uh, pin two actually uh, is going through these resistors right here and then into this trimmer pot. And I'm, guessing somewhere around here we'd have to let me see if i can flip the board over well anyway we we can't really see it because these uh these two vias right here are up underneath this this led display and <laughs> i'm not gonna pull it off that would take too much time and and uh <laughs> and, and it's not really worth it i i, I i'm very confident that it looks like what they're doing is instead of using this using this uh, op amp as a buffer, they're actually using it as an amplifier and and boosting the voltage coming out out of the op amp. I guess so they can get a better range on it or uh, a reading on it. I I guess I I don't know. I uh, <laughs> it, it's interesting that that they're doing it. It's it's adjustable. So. Uh, I thought they were adjusting the voltages coming going into the op amp. I, I don't know. I'd have to trace that out. That that's very interesting. But I'll leave that. Uh, if I do that, I'll I'll make another video. But this video is already long enough, and we kind of get an idea. It's it's just they're just using it to calibrate the RTD and the and the micro, so everybody's reading the same thing. Don't forget, you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal, or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.